Today I'm going to do a quick analysis on Sealed Air Corporation stock. The stock symbol is SEE. And Sealed Air mostly is known for bubble wrap and their packaging products. You can see some of their products here. There's their famous bubble wrap. They've been making it for over 60 years. They have these pillow cushions. They also have uh, shrink wrapping and other food packaging products through their cryovac division and they also offer different packaging and containers for brands that you know well in any household okay so what we're going to use to analyze this stock is beat the market analyzer or btma stock analyzer so it's here btma stock analyzer.com and they have an apple app as well uh, you click analyze stocks and next you'll type in C or you could type in sealed air here and look it up by company name so I'll click analyze these stocks and if I wanted to I could click S&P 500 and and list all the stocks in the S&P 500 and it would order them from the best stocks or the most recommended stocks at the top to the riskiest stocks I could show you that quickly So you can see here, it'll list them all and rank them. But right now, we just want to look at C, or Sealed Air Corporation. Okay, here we are back at this page. So it says that it's a good company at a bargain price, recommended by, um, and it says the market price is now 36, around 36.49, and the analyzer recommends to buy around that price. Next, if we click the summary info, it ranks it at a 75 out of 100. So anything over 70 is considered a good potential investment, but obviously there are other stocks that are ranked higher than this 75. So next we're going to click on company rating, and this breaks down the scores. So 10-year upward price per share is at 14.5 out of 17, so that's not bad. The return on equity is very good, 16 out of 16. The earnings, if they're rising and consistent over the long term, and actually sealed air is not, it's only around 11 out of 16. So not a very good score for consistent earnings over the last five years. Uh, it does have the ability to recover from a downturn or crash. The return on invested capital is also, it's low. It's only around 6.5 out of uh, 12 so that's not very good gross margin percent is good 12 out of 12 and PG ratio tells us how well of a growth stock this is for the long term so it's saying not very good for long-term growth stock and that's the total score again if you want any more info about this what you're looking for you could just click on these little question marks and it'll tell you what you're looking for and give you tips all right, if we click on the ticker symbol here, it'll give us more information about each of these categories. So you can see the 10-year price upward trend. It was going up from 2012 to 2015. It was increasing quickly. But then, as you see, since 2015, it's actually been declining in price. And um, one reason maybe why it's been declining recently is because uh, they had some issues with insider trading. Uh, allegedly, the upper management did some insider trading, so they're looking into that. And additionally, um, there were some problems with the way the company did accounting, and that's being looked into how they made some, uh, some deductions, and then they also hired an auditing company, and there was some conflict of interest with that. So that information could be hurting the stock right now as well. Okay, diluted earnings. Now this is troublesome to have a big dip here. You want to see diluted earnings or earnings over the long period of time to be rising consistently. So you want to see it more like this going on an incline. But here we see that it has a dip down. This could have been a one-time uh, incidence but we'd have to look into it more to find out what happened in that year why it went down so much uh, then it, it 
gradually went up, but then again, the earnings have gone down recently. So it went from 4.29 down to 1.2. So this is worrisome. Okay, market recovery, again, it does have a good potential to recover from a market crash. So you could see from 2008, this was the price per share. And then within three years, it had recovered and it was at a higher price than it was since the economic crisis in 2008. Okay, return on equity. Um, return on equity is good. You could see that it's going up. Uh, there was no return on equity calculated here in 2018, and this is actually because the uh, company has negative earnings. They have, or negative, sorry, negative equity. So the shareholder equity is around negative. 330 something like that million so that was an issue there but the other years we look for a return on equity that's 16 or higher and again you could just click on the question mark it'll tell you what you're going to look for there so it is 16 and higher on these years here it was 212 in uh, 2017 and the typical return on equity for uh, packaging and container companies like sealed air is around around 16 percent something like that so return on equity for sealed air is very high however as I said recently there's been a problem because of their equity being negative all right uh, next is return on invested capital uh, also you can see here we're looking for 16 or higher with return on invested capital and it hasn't been 16 or higher for 2014 through 2016 and then just in 2017 it was higher again nothing in 2018 probably because of the problem with the uh, equity being negative gross margin percent um, we look at 30 or higher and you could see in these years till 2016 it was good then worrisome here it's been dipping down so it actually started to decline from 2016 through 2018 onward so that's an issue as well so I'm seeing a lot of red flags here um, with the uh, downward price trend um, the uh, EPS overall is good but this is worrisome to have a dip here and also to have a dip in the very last year okay so you have to look closer at these things to see what's happening most recently also return on equity here no reading and we find out later because it's of no no equity or negative equity and again then the return on the invested capital those are all red flags gross margin percent declining in the most recent years that's a red flag as well and again we said before that the price um, earnings growth which tells us if this would be a long-term growth company uh, it looks at the past five years it's saying that it's not we look at a number here between zero and uh, one so if you need to know about that you can click here and it'll tell you looking between zero and one for this so here it's it's 2.5 and here it's up until tw 12 so not very good PEG score all right next we're gonna go back so I don't really like what I'm seeing with sealed air so far uh, stock value so again, here's estimated stock value, uh, 38, and Buffett valuation comparison tells us that this stock could possibly make around 10% uh, return. If we look at the uh, price, the uh, current price right now is around 36. So it's about at the 52-week low, because 52-week low is only 35 here and it's right around 36 so it could be a good time to buy because it's at a 52 week low but as I stated there were some trouble some red flags that we saw before you definitely wouldn't want to buy uh, anything over the 52 week average you'd want to try to stay under that and, and closer to this 52 week low so going back we said 36 is the current price now stock value maybe around 38 with a 10% uh, return possibility in the future possibly because it's already at its 52 week low so you might look at it as it can only go up from here 
but that's not always the case. It could go down further because there's the pessimism growing because of the insider trading and other allegations with their accounting practices. If we click on intrinsic value, uh, we could see here there are different um, intrinsic value or valuation models. There's price earnings, there's residual income, there's discount cash flow, and then this takes the average. So you could see here this one is high, and this takes into account price and earnings the most. Uh, residual income will take into account more with the uh, actual equity and like book value, tangible value of the company. And then discounted cash flow obviously takes into account cash flow more, so that's why they're different. But you want to get a, you want to get various valuation models, and then put them together to get a ballpark figure of what the valuation would be. But we're seeing here two valuations that are actually lower, and one that's much higher. So that's why that's pulling that average up. But um, I'd be leaning more conservatively towards these lower ones and saying it's possibly uh, more maybe overpriced right now if we look at these two valuations. And this down here tells you at what percent growth rate. So if it was at a zero percent growth rate, if we look at the discounted cash flow, this will tell us that if it grew at 15% like it has in the past, then we, through years one through five, then we're going to be looking at a intrinsic value around 35, but it doesn't look like the company's going to be growing at 15%. According to recent data, it'll be growing at much less. So we'd have to take that into consideration and maybe we'll be more conservative with this valuation, not 35 and actually, actually much less than that. Okay, so that would also signify that it's possibly uh, overpriced right now at 36. Okay, again, we went to pricing. We'll go to miscellaneous fundamentals. This looks more at the uh, balance sheet. So debt to equity, we look for less than one. And this was Benjamin Graham's role, who was uh, Warren Buffett's mentor. And again, you can click here to get more information about that. Uh, we have nothing here, so it wasn't registering. This either means that there is no long-term debt or the equity is zero or negative. So if we go and look at the balance sheet for sealed air, we could see that the total stockholder equity, most recently, it is negative. It's negative $349 million. So it's been going down from all the way up here. You could see 1,163 down here to negative 349. And these numbers are in millions. And this is the most recent numbers, and these are the older numbers. So that's very worrisome. Okay, PG ratio. If it's under 16, it usually signifies the stock is, is undervalued, and it's right near 16, so this could mean it's, it's about fairly valued or slightly um, undervalued. The current ratio, uh, 1.06, we look for 1 and higher or greater than 1, so this just makes the mark at above 1. Here's the market cap, and the dividend yield is 1.77, so it pays a modest dividend. Uh, another issue with the dividend is that it hasn't really been growing much over the past 10 years, so that's something to be concerned with. When we click on Complete View, uh, this gives us an overall picture of what we looked at. So initially the stock was looking good, but when we analyzed further into these individual categories, it showed us that there are concerns in the most recent years with declines happening and also negative equity. So I'm not totally sold on sealed air, and um, I wouldn't really be comfortable in investing in this stock at this time. If you're interested in checking out the BTMA Stock Analyzer, there will be a link for a free trial in the video description. Have a great day.